This is a 24 pack of metallic acrylic paints from Home Goods. Oh, that's so pretty. Hi everyone, I recently went to Home Goods and checked out their art supply section. So in this video, I'm going to be testing these paints, swatching all of them. You can check out the shimmery metallicness. And can they stand up? Yeah. Then I'm going to create an original piece of artwork on this wood panel. It's pretty big this time. Normally I work kind of smaller, but we're gonna go all out. This set was $24.99. I'm very curious to find out how it works, what the quality is like. This set is created by Montmartre. It sounds really professional, actually. I can create. Why am I like twisted like this? I do these things all the time. Ideal introductory set for students and artists. Cool. <laughs> I seriously just held this upside down. Okay, now let's get into the swatching. Let's get into this. Open her up. Ooh, there are 24 different colors. Each one comes in a 36 milliliter tube, AKA 1.2 ounces. This would be some seriously satisfying ASMR footage if the paint squeezing actually had a noise. I have a feeling the turquoise one is gonna be my favorite. Let me know in the comment section below which color is yours. That's so pretty. Oh, don't do that auto zoom, you stink. Stop it. Thank you. I was planning to swatch all of them on the back of the piece of wood that I'm working on and I realized, okay, that's kind of silly because then I'd have to flip it every time to see like what my color palette is. So I grabbed this beat up piece from my supply area. I'm going to swatch on the back of here so I can still use the front if I want to. This needs majorly sanding, but for now, I don't really have to worry about that. Here I am opening every single tube one by one. Well, not on camera actually, I just showed you a couple of them. And I thought that this part would be so satisfying to sweep these all off into my hands and whisk them away, wisp, whisk, whisk them away into the garbage. But it did not turn out as planned. So unsatisfying. Send this to an artist to make them mad. It is finally time to swatch. Starting with the white. This is so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Twelve colors down, twelve more to go. And here is the entire metallic family. Look at it glisten and shimmer and shine. And now we label. My handwriting looks absolutely awful here, especially since the marker was bleeding a little bit, but we will just ignore that. If you have not picked your favorite color yet, by the way, now is the perfect time. For the sake of the challenge of only using metallic paints, I'm going to cover the entire panel of wood with a few different blues and maybe some of the greens so I get a solid background of these colors. Normally, since the tubes are so small, I wouldn't want to waste them and I would gesso this or I would use another brand of white acrylic, but we're gonna go for it since that's what the video is all about. Maybe these four. Also, I normally sand these first, but I don't feel like it. Sorry. Let's see how far this goes. Oh, that's so pretty. I really like how easily this paint spreads. It flows nicely. I do need a little bit more. I thought turquoise was my favorite, but I think that the sage green is actually. I'm gonna let this dry completely and come back another day to paint details on here and 
you know, actually create artwork. It looks so pretty. After the background dried completely and probably a few days had passed at this point, I went in with a measuring tape and I am creating a border and you'll see why very soon. I had to start somewhere. So I went in with some blue, which is the same color as the sky basically. This is so I can blend the first element. And I'm making a subtle gradient here with white in the very middle. We're gonna wait for that to dry. So I then moved on to the bottom part here which is going to be snowy hills let's talk a little bit about the consistency of the paint it is very smooth i think one of the issues that i was having is i wanted to put down this giant layer all at once and I wanted to continue painting over that to build it up before everything dried because I was impatient. If you haven't guessed by now, this is going to be a nighttime scene. Here I'm creating a couple of tree trunks and when I go to put the green for the pine needles, well, let's just say it takes quite a few layers to build that color up and not see the trunk through. For certain things, this could be more of an issue. For a tree, it's actually great because in real life, you can see glimpses of the trunk through certain areas of the branches where they're more sparse. And something else great about this limited opacity or translucentness, as you will, is that you can really build up different highlights and shadows and color variations. And I would say it helps me to make this look more realistic or semi-realistic. So I guess what I'm trying to say is when it comes to blending, this paint is actually easier for me to blend and build colors than it is with some of my other acrylic paint brands that are more opaque. A lot of times when I use those, I'll have to water them down if I want a really nice gradient. And with this, it's already like that. The amount of time that it takes to build these layers up can definitely be a con if you're in a hurry. I would say the most difficult thing about working with this paint is the lighting in general when you're working on it. If you shift it in any way, sometimes you can lose detail of all the colors and it just looks like a shimmery silver pool of black wholeness, but silver. I should write a book of explanations. That was terrible. But sometimes the silver just engulfs everything. There were times I was trying to paint with full overhead lighting and it just did not work. I couldn't see any of the color or detail I was putting down. And I'm like, hmm, this isn't really showing up much. And then I moved it and I realized, wow, wait, I just did all that. Everything magically appeared. The lighting shift also makes it really dynamic to look at when it's finished. You'll see in the closing shots when I move the painting in different directions, the shimmer factor is superb. But that's enough about the paint. This is a piece of art and it's meant to tell a story. With this piece, I had in mind a cozy home. You're sitting inside your house on a snowy night. You're looking outside. The moon is glowing. It's huge. I was thinking, what could make my night even more cozy, even more happy? Who would I want here with me in this moment with this view? A cat. Not just any cat though. Leo. And all his orangeness because one of his most favorite things to do in life was to look out windows at snow falling, at animals, and bugs flying every which way, tapping the glass. Leo was here. Painting this brought out a lot of emotions because I tried to look through so many pictures of him for reference of his fur texture. I only had a couple pictures that I could even use as reference. I normally didn't take pictures of his back, I guess, because his face was so cute. Some tears were shed, but at the end of the day, I am so happy that I made this piece of art and even though he's not physically here with me anymore and can't share cuddles and purrs and all that with me this winter and Christmas, he is here with me in spirit and this painting is going to be something really special. I'm gonna love looking at it. For those of you who have also experienced the loss of a fur family member or members, my heart goes out to you. You are not alone in these feelings of grief and sadness and longing emptiness. Animals are truly family members and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for the outpouring of love and support on Leo's goodbye video. I have read every single comment. I want to be able to reply to all of them at some point. I just need to rebuild some energy because it's a lot to keep putting myself into that mind space. 
but even if you think that I haven't seen your comment, I most likely have. Also, you're going to see some footage shortly of me at this really awesome cabin. It was kind of like having Leo there to look out at the scenery. I know he would have loved it. We saw some deer. This was in Hocking Hills. This was the most beautiful setting that I could have ever displayed this painting in. So I wanted to share it with all of you and hopefully you find the beauty in it as well. Truly such a magical atmosphere and I have zero regrets for spending probably 15 plus hours on this painting in total. so much for watching. Please check out more of my videos. I'm going to link them in the i card up in the corner as well as in the description box below. I hope that you all have a great rest of the day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Ooh, on top I may look put together but my socks don't match and my slippers are not actually mine. They're really big.